Hey guys, welcome back to my channel Easy Dental by Dr. Asmat and the topic which we are going to study today is Pulp Vitality Test. You must have seen some patients coming to you and they are saying that uh, whenever they are drinking cold water they are having some sort of pain or some patients they might complain that whenever they are sipping tea or coffee or uh, sometimes when they are eating ice cream they are having a lot of pain. So how to diagnose what is the status of the pulp okay so these pulp tests they will be helpful in this situation when you have to diagnose the clinical condition of the pulp okay so these tests they will uh, tell us about the response of the pulpal sensory neurons present in the tooth now there are three terms one is the pulp vitality one is sensibility and one is sensitivity now what does this mean uh, vitality means it is related to the vascular supply okay so it will uh, be uh, the pulp vitality means that we have to assess the pulp blood supply then pulp sensibility means that assessment of the pulp sensory response and pulp sensitivity means that there is a condition of the pulp which is responsive to a stimulus suppose you are applying a hot stimulus or even if you are applying a cold stimulus when it will respond then it is pulp sensitivity so all these three terms they they are interconnected you can use any of that but they have a specific meaning to them now there are several methods to assess the pulp uh, uh, or the tooth vitality so there are two main tests one is the neural sensibility test and the other one is the pulp vascularity test so neural sensibility test the name itself suggests that we are uh, uh, testing the sensory response of the tooth of the pulp and pulp vascularity means we are checking whether there is a vital blood supply present in the tooth or not so uh, among the neural sensibility tests there are thermal tests and which includes heat test and cold test then there is electric pulp test which is commonly known as EPT then there is an aesthetic test and test cavity and in the pulp vascularity test uh, you can have pulp uh, sorry pulse oximetry laser doppler flowmetry and other tests such as thermography or transmitted light photoplethysmography all these tests so in this video we will be discussing mainly about the thermal test that is the heat test and the cold test and in the next upcoming videos we will uh, we'll make videos regarding the electric pulp test and all the pulp vascularity tests. So now let us start with the neural sensibility test. So these tests they, have, they work on the principle of stimulating the neural fibers which are present in the pulp. We are not discussing about the blood flow here we are discussing about the sensory neurons so in thermal tests we apply hot or cold liquid or stimulus to a tooth to determine its sensitivity to the thermal changes so there can be two types of response one is the normal response or the baseline uh, baseline response and the other one is the abnormal response so normal response what will be uh, happening that whenever you are applying any cold or heat stimulus to the tooth then the patient might feel the sensation but as soon as you remove the stimulus the pain or the sensation it will disappear immediately okay and what are the abnormal responses it could be there is no response to the stimulus suppose you are applying heat to the tooth and the patient is not responding at all that means the pulp is now dead there is no sensory neurons there is no signaling in the happening in the pulp okay so the abnormal response could be lack of response to the stimulus it could be lingering or intensification of the pain when you remove the stimulus and it could be immediate excruciating pain as soon as the stimulus is placed on the tooth so these three types of responses could be seen and then you can predict that there is something abnormal now if we talk about the sensory fibers or the sensory neurons present in the pulp basically there are two types one is the myelinated a delta fibers and the other one is the unmyelinated c fibers so majority of the fibers which are present in the pulp like approx 90 percent they are a delta fibers now what is the function of these a delta fibers and c fibers so a delta fibers they basically they detect the acute or sharp pain okay and the c fibers they are responsible for detection of dull boring 
or gnawing type of pain or poorly located pain okay so remember these two fibers one is the a delta fiber and c fibers a delta fibers they uh, detect the acute or sharp pain and c fibers they detect the dull or poorly located pain now these thermal tests suppose you are applying hot or cold stimulus what they'll do they will activate the hydrodynamic fluid movements which are present in the dentinal tubules and because of that fluid movement these fluid movements what they'll do they will activate the a delta fibers so cold as i have told you they will stimulate the fast conducting a delta fibers and heat also they will stimulate the fast conducting a delta fibers but the thing with heat test is that it has a biphasic response now what is biphasic response or biphasic stimulation what it will do it will also activate the fast conducting a delta fibers and if you will apply heat continuously to a tooth then it will stimulate the slow conducting C fibers also. Okay, so it has a biphasic stimulation. It can stimulate both the A delta fibers as well as the C fibers. Now, C fibers, as we have discussed, that what does they do? They they detect the lingering type of pain. They detect the dull type of pain. So when C fibers are activated, there will be a lingering pain. So pain will be of prolonged duration that's why it is always recommended that do not apply the heat test for more than five seconds otherwise what will happen it will activate the c fibers and c fibers they will detect the lingering pain and the patient will have pain for a longer duration of time so this cold test is the first test and is the primary pulp testing method and it is especially useful in patients who present us with porcelain jacket crowns or pfm crowns okay where there is no natural tooth surface available to access it now there are several materials which can be used for cold test so uh, most common is the endo ice that is 1112 tetrafluoroethane then you can also use carbon dioxide, snow or dry ice, pencil of ice, then ice cold water under rubber dam isolation and ethyl chloride. All these uh, things can be used for uh, cold test estimation. And all these things they are applied to the mid facial area of the tooth or the crown. And you have to remember the temperature of the frozen carbon dioxide or dry ice which is uh, minus 69 degree fahrenheit to minus 119 degree fahrenheit or if you convert it into celsius then it will be minus 56 degree celsius to minus 98 degree celsius okay so this temperature it is usually asked in the neat exams so remember this then what is the mechanism of cold test so it is basically based on the brandstrom's theory and cold test uh, it should be applied for less than or equal to 15 seconds now what will happen if you apply the cold to a tooth so there will be some in some cases you will get a positive response similar to that of the contralateral tooth which is healthy okay so if the response is similar to that of that uh, of the healthy tooth then it is a healthy pulp that, that means your tooth is perfectly normal if there is a short sharp pain and it disappears immediately as soon as you remove the stimulus then there can be a case of reversible pulpitis that means there is inflammation of the pulp but it is in that stage where it can be reverted back to normal then there is uh, an excruciating painful response and that response will linger even after you have removed the stimulus okay so it will suggest that the tooth is having a uh, an irreversible pulpitis okay now this situation it cannot be reverted back to normal that is now the pulp is somehow damaged and if you're getting no response at all that means it is a case of non-vital tooth and you have to confirm it with other vitality tests also so you understood one is the healthy pulp one stage is reversible pulpitis one is irreversible pulpitis and the other one is the non-vital tooth so the next one is the heat test so this test it is most useful when a patient comes to you and he says that he's having intense pain when he's drinking tea or coffee or any hot water or food so then you can go for this test and also when a patient is unable to identify which tooth is sensitive sometimes a patient you must have seen that they come and they tell uh, doctors are pain or I but they are not able to identify kiss tooth may pain or I okay now with heat testing there is a delayed response 
okay because what will happen i have told you that heat continuous heat application it will activate the c fibers and there can be a delayed response because c fibers they uh, uh, they detect dull boring pain and uh, there can be a delayed response so always you should wait for 10 seconds between each heat test so that you can get sufficient time for the onset of symptoms so it is not like ki aapne just heat apply kiya and you will get some response you have to wait for 10 seconds before conducting another set of tests now there are several materials which are used for heat tests it can be electric heat carrier you can use hot gutta percha sticks also and you can also use, use hot water under rubber dam isolation you can use hot burnisher hot compound or dry rubber polishing wheel because these uh, rubber polishing wheels they will generate friction and the friction will generate heat okay so all these materials they can be used for heat testing now the principle of heat is that you have to apply heat for not more than five seconds okay so when you are applying heat there will be vasodilation which will cause increased intrapulpal pressure and it will lead to reduced neural excitation threshold okay now there can be three types of responses one is there is no response that means the tooth is non-vital there can be an immediate excruciating painful response or a painful response that lingers even after the removal of stimulus that will suggest that it is a case of irreversible pulpitis or if you can have a positive response as uh, similar to that of the contralateral tooth so it will suggest that your pulp is healthy now the diagnostic accuracy of these three tests uh, the maximum accuracy is of cold test that is 86 percent then you have EPT that is 81% and heat test is 71% but you should always combine two tests to perfectly come to a conclusion so it is better recommended that you can use cold test and EPT. So if you want to differentiate between reversible and irreversible pulpitis the best test is cold test. So what happens in irreversible pulpitis always the patient's chief complaint is that they are having pain on heat application and in that case when you will apply coal to that uh, coal to that tooth they will have a temporary relief of pain so this suggests that it is a case of irreversible pulpitis okay now we'll uh, in the next video we'll be discussing about the electric pulp test and the other pulp vascularity tests which are left behind so stay tuned and please if you like uh, my content please like and subscribe my channel bye bye thank you